A difference of squares is when we are subtracting two perfect squares. We're going to begin with the factors and we're going to expand these using the foiling process because we're multiplying a binomial times a binomial. And then we're going to see if we can look for a pattern that will allow us to factor a difference of squares polynomial. So we're going to begin by multiplying the first terms, the outside terms, the inside terms, and the last terms. So x times x gives us that x squared. We have negative 5x plus 5x and then minus 25. When we go to combine our like terms together, we can see that negative 5x plus 5x is going to zero out, leaving us just with x squared minus 25. So this is a difference of squares. We are subtracting two perfect squares. And then we're going to do the same thing over here where we have two binomials that we're multiplying together. So we're going to go ahead and foil them out. So 3 times 3 is going to give us 9. We're going to have negative 6y plus 6y and then minus 4y squared. And again, when we go to combine those like terms together, negative 6y plus 6y is going to give us 0y. There's a going to zero out, leaving us just with that 9 minus 4y squared, which is a difference of squares. We are subtracting two perfect squares. So take a look, and what do you think we're doing if this was what you started with and you had to factor it in order to get back to the original factors? And hopefully you can see that these factors are conjugates. So remember, conjugates are when we have the exact same terms in each bracket, but one is a plus, one is a minus. So we have the exact same terms in each bracket, but one is a plus and one is a minus. So when we're given a difference of squares polynomial, check first of all, is there a greatest common factor? But then you need to recognize that the outside product and the inside product always end up zeroing out. So that's why we don't have an X term, or in this case, that's why we don't have a Y term. The outside and the inside end up zeroing out. So when we start with this, we're gonna set up our conjugates. One is a plus, one is a minus. We're going to square root that first term to get the first term in each bracket. And then we're going to square root that last term to get the last term in each bracket. All right, so first of all, we can take a look and recognize this is a difference of squares. We are subtracting two perfect squares. There is no greatest common factor, so we're going to go ahead and recognize that middle term is going to zero out. We have conjugates. We're going to set up one as a plus, one as a minus. Square root x squared, and we're going to get an x, so we can plunk that into the first term of each bracket. Square root that 16, and we're going to get a 4, so we can plunk that into the second term in each bracket. And then, as always, quickly foil this out. x squared gets us back to that first term. Negative 4x plus 4x gives us 0x. That x term is gone. And then 4 times negative 4 gives us that negative 16. Okay, second one here. Again, we don't have a greatest common factor. We recognize that we do have a difference of squares. Those are two perfect squares. So we're gonna say, okay, let's set up our conjugates. One is a plus, one is a minus. Square root y squared and we get y. Square root 81 and we get nine. And then as always, let's check this. So we get y squared, negative nine y plus nine y is zero y, so that y term is gone and then nine times negative nine is that negative 81. All right, same thing here. No greatest common factor, we are subtracting. Set up the conjugates, one is a plus, one is a minus, and then again, square root the first term, the square root of nine x squared is three x, the square root of 25 y squared is that five y. Don't be scared of fractions. If we take a look, the numerators are perfect squares, the denominators are perfect squares, and each of those variables is also a perfect square. So this entire term is a perfect square, this entire term is a perfect square, and we are subtracting. We have a difference of squares. So we're going to set up our conjugates. So one is a plus, one is a minus. The square root of one is one. The square root of four is two. The square root of 25 is five. The square root of 121 is 11. And obviously the square root of Q squared is Q and the square root of P squared is just going to be that P. Now, in our next one here, we do not have a difference of squares, so you have to pay attention. There is no greatest common factor, so we can't do anything there. But right here, because of that plus, this is a sum of squares. So if we were to set up our conjugates, you can see we're not gonna end up with that positive term there. So in this case, this particular polynomial doesn't factor. There's nothing we can do, so this would be a prime polynomial. This here is a difference of squares. We are subtracting two perfect squares. So again, we set up our conjugates. One is a plus, one is a minus. 
The square root of 64 is 8. The square root of m squared is just that m. And then FOIL it back to make sure that we correctly factored it. Now in our next set of polynomials, you might say, okay, we've got two terms, and I'm going to give you a hint. If you see two terms, oftentimes you are going to be factoring as a difference of squares. So we do have that subtraction sign. However, 2 and 32 are not perfect squares. So check, do we have a greatest common factor? And yes, we do. So always remove that first. So we're going to divide that 2 out of each of those terms. And then you're not done. Check the inside of this bracket. Can that be factored further? So now we see that we do have a difference of squares again. So we need to keep going. We're going to set up the conjugates. 1 is a plus, 1 is a minus. Square root that first term to get x. Square root that second term to get the 4. And same thing here. We do not have perfect squares in 8 or 18, but we can remove a greatest common factor. So we're going to do that first and then always check. Can we factor this further? Yes, we can. So we're going to set up the conjugates and we have 1 is a plus, 1 is a minus. Square root the first term and we get that 2x squared. Square root the second term and we get that 3y. And then keep checking, can we factor this further? This does not factor further because even though we are subtracting, these are not perfect squares, nor is that 2. So this particular polynomial has 1, 2, 3 factors in the final answer. This one also has 1, 2, 3 factors in the final answer. Okay, so take a look at this one. Again, there is a greatest common factor. Take a look at the bracket. Can we factor this further? If yes, keep going. Check, can we factor either of those brackets further? No, we're done. We have three factors in this particular polynomial. And again, if you're going to FOIL it back, you would FOIL this out first of all, and then distribute that 16 in to make sure that you did in fact factor correctly. And you're always doing that. I'm not necessarily showing it here, but mentally you're always checking. Okay, so we have a difference. These are both perfect squares. Set up the conjugates. Now check, can we factor further? This is a plus, so that one is done. This is a minus, so we need to keep going. So we're going to set up our conjugates and then just check, can any of those factor further? This is a minus. 1 is a perfect square, but 3y is not. So this is the final answer on that particular one. Okay, we are not done the 10c lesson yet, so if you are in regular 10c, don't go too far because there's another type of polynomial we still have to factor, but we're going to take a look at some AP examples. If you are in 10c, you might want to watch these because they are going to come up next year anyway. So we can see here that this is a perfect square, as is this, and we are subtracting. So the same process applies where we're going to set up the conjugates, 1 is a plus and 1 is a minus. When we square root that first term of that x plus 2, square rooting, remember, cancels a squared. So we have x plus 2 and then x plus 2. When we square root 9, we get that 3. And then you have to take a look and see if there's any like terms within the brackets that we can combine. So we know 2 plus 3 is going to give us 5. 2 minus 3 is going to give us that negative 1. So just make sure you go ahead and fully simplify each of those brackets. The same thing with this next one. So we can see we are subtracting two terms, both of which are perfect squares. So we're going to set up the conjugates. We square root a squared. It cancels out, leaving us just with that y minus 3. Now, we're going to take a look. Are there any like terms within the bracket that we are going to be able to simplify? And you have to be careful because we have four minus 3, which is 1, but over here, remember, we're distributing that negative sign in, so this becomes negative y, and negative times a negative is a positive. So we have positive 3 plus 4 is going to give us that 7. And then here we have a squared term minus a squared term. So we're going to set up our conjugates, square root the first term, leaving us just with that m plus 1, square root the last term, leaving us just with that m plus 2. And then again, you're looking, do we have any like terms? m plus m is 2m. 1 plus 2 is 3 in the first bracket. And then in the second bracket, we have m minus m. So those m's are going to actually end up canceling each other out. And then we're distributing that negative sign in. So remember, this is a negative 2 plus 1 is that negative 1. So we're going to have that negative 1 times 2m plus 3. And the last type of polynomial we're going to take a look at is how can we factor a perfect squared trinomial? So a perfect squared trinomial is a polynomial with three terms. That makes it a trinomial. The first term and the last term are both perfect squares. 
So we know how to factor a trinomial. Is there a greatest common factor? In this case, there's not. So let's go ahead and multiply a times c. So 25 times 9 is going to give us 225. Are there two numbers that multiply to 225 and add to 30? And yes, there are, 15 and 15. So we can go ahead and set up our two binomials. We're going to say what times what gets us back to that 25x squared. And then 5x times what will get us to 15. So we can see that's going to be a 3. So we can go ahead and fill that in. And then we're going to say 5 times what will get us that other 15. And that also is going to be a 3. Okay, so now let's try the next one here. So again, this is a trinomial. There is no greatest common factor. And we recognize the first term and the last term are perfect squares. Are there two numbers that multiply to 4 times 25, which is 100, and add to negative 20? Well, negative 10 and negative 10. So again, go ahead and set up the binomials. What times what gets us back to 4y squared? And then 2 times what number will give us negative 10? And we can see that's going to be a negative 5, so we can fill that in. And then 2 times what is going to give us that other negative 10? And we can see, again, we're going to have negative 5. When we have a perfect squared trinomial, you're going to notice that that outside product and the inside product will always give us the same value. The outside product and the inside product will always give us the same value. You're also going to notice that each of these factors is identical. So really what we have is 5x plus 3 squared. That bracket times itself. This one we have 2y minus 5 squared. This bracket times itself. And this makes a lot of sense when we think about our algebra tiles. If this represents the length and this represents the width, if the length and the width are the same, we have a square. The length and the width are the same. We can build this polynomial with algebra tiles and you're going to see that those pieces arrange into a perfect square. So here's a little trick for you. If we have a polynomial, x plus three squared, and we are asked to simplify or to expand this, then we know we're going to have the first term always times itself. So you can see here the first term times itself, we are actually squaring that first term. So we're gonna square x squared gets us that x squared. And then we know outside product is always the same as the inside product. So we double the product. So if we multiply together three times x, we get three x, double that, and we get six x. The last term is always going to be that number times itself. So we know that three times three is just three squared, which is nine. So the quick way to expand a binomial squared is we square the first term, we double the product, so multiply those together to get the product, multiply it by 2 to double it, and then we're going to square the last term. So again, square the first term gets us that 4x squared, double the product, so negative 4 times 2x is negative 8x times 2 gets us that negative 16x, because again, remember, it's going to be the outside plus the inside, same thing twice, and then square the last term. Negative 4 times negative 4 gives us that positive 16. Each of these are perfect square trinomials. If we start with this, what are you going to do to get back to this? Well, hopefully you can see that if we squared this to get this, then if we start with this, we're square rooting to get back here. And if we squared this last term to get the constant term here, Hopefully you can see that we're going to square root this term to get back here. And then the sign in the middle of our factors is the sign on that middle x term. So if we have a perfect square trinomial, this process where you're looking for those two numbers and then reversing the foiling process, that will work. So you can always use the method you've been using and you will be able to factor correctly. But if you recognize that we have a perfect square trinomial, we can go about this a little bit faster. So what we're gonna do is we're going to say, okay, is this a perfect square? Is this a perfect square? First and last terms are perfect squares. And then is this middle term double the product of what we would have had in the bracket? Is that middle term here double the product of what we would have had in the bracket? And again, if this is a plus, this is a plus. If this is a minus, this is a minus. And you will notice that this is a positive in each case because if we have a positive value squared, it remains positive. A negative value squared is a negative times a negative, which also becomes a positive. So in order to be a perfect square trinomial, that last term here is also going to be a positive. All right, so I have a trinomial. There is no greatest common factor. Let's try to factor this the quick way. I recognize this first term is a perfect square. This last term is a perfect square. The square root of y squared is 1y. The square root of 25 is 5. 
1 times 5 is 5. Double that, we will get a 10. So this is going to be a perfect square trinomial. So we can go ahead and set up our brackets. The square root of y squared is y. The square root of 25 is 5. The sign is the sign on that middle term there. So because that's a negative 10, we're going to put in a negative. And then check this. We have y times y gets us back to y squared. Negative 5y minus 5y is that negative 10y, and then negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. These are not conjugates because they're both minuses. So what we have is a binomial squared. We can write it either like this or we can write it like this, but these are not conjugates. If they were conjugates, that middle term would zero out. So in this next one, again, this is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. Square root this and we get 1x. Square root this and we get 12. 1 times 12 is 12. Double that and we do get that middle term. So I recognize this is a perfect square trinomial. So I can even just go ahead and say I know I'm going to have a binomial squared. Square root the first term, we get x. Square root the last term, the square root of 144 is 12. The sign is the sign on that middle term. So because it's a positive, we are going to have a positive. And now, as always, we're going to check. So square the first term, we get back to x squared. Double the product. So 12 times x is 12x, times 2 gets us that 24x. Square the last term, 12 squared is 144. Neither of these are perfect square trinomials because here I know that constant term has to be a positive value. It's not. There are no two numbers that will multiply to negative 81 and add to negative 18. So this happens to be a prime polynomial. Just because it's not a perfect square trinomial does not necessarily mean it's prime. If you can find those two numbers that multiply to the product of a times c and add to b, you can still factor it. But in this case, there just are no two numbers. We cannot factor this. And the same thing over here. There's no greatest common factor. There are no two numbers that will multiply to that 4 and add to 6. This is also a prime polynomial. Even though the first and last terms happen to be perfect squares, if I square root this and get 2y, square root this and get 1, 2 times 1 is 2, double that and we get a 4. We don't get a 6. So this is not considered a perfect square trinomial either. And the last three, just for you to see how quick and easy this is. So again, I see this is a perfect square, this is a perfect square. Square root this and we get a 3, square root this and we get a 4. 3 times 4 is 12, double that, we get 24. So this is a perfect square trinomial. So I know I'm going to have a binomial squared. Square root the first term, we get 3x. Square root the last term, we get 4. The sign is the sign on that x term. And then again, quickly check. Square the first term, 9x squared. Double the product. So negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Times 2 is that negative 24. Square the last term, and we're going to get that positive 16. Now, if you want, you can always in the beginning write this out as 3x minus 4 times 3x minus 4, and then you can go ahead and FOIL it. It might make it easier to see that we are getting that negative 12x and that negative 12x, which is combining to get that negative 24x. Now, this one over here, this is not a perfect square, nor is 48, but always we're checking for a greatest common factor. So we can divide every term by 3, and then check, is this still factorable? And again, we recognize perfect square, perfect square, this is going to work. So we can go ahead and set this up. Square root the first term, square root the last term, sine is the sign there. And then check, squared becomes b squared. Double the product, 4 times b is 4b, times 2 we get 8b, square the last term and we get 16. And then you can always distribute that 3 in and we should get back what we originally started. So there are three factors, 3 times b plus 4 times b plus 4 again. And the grand finale, the first thing we're going to do is check, is there a greatest common factor? And we can remove a 4 from each of those terms and then check, is this still factorable? This is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. I check my middle term and recognize that it is. So then really quickly, square root the first term, square root the last term, sine is the sign in the middle. And then always, always, always check. 6 squared gets us back to 36. Double the product, so negative 6b times 2 gets us that negative 12b. Square the last term, negative b times negative b is that positive b squared. Distribute that 4 in again, and we get back to our original trinomial. 
So when you factor, remember you are creating the brackets. When we expand, we are eliminating those brackets.